Hey guys, Tyler from Flex Machine Tools here. I cover the Midwest and the Southeast Territories for Flex Arm Sales. Hey everybody, I'm Max. I cover West Coast and North Central for Flex Arm. Today we're going to be talking about the electric tapping arms and maybe how you have an old pneumatic arm and you want to look at upgrading and maybe how this is more efficient than what you're currently doing. To kick us all off, Tyler, run me through this arm. What do we have here? So this is the REM24D tapping arm. It's similar to the r and as far as frame goes and capacity, but there's a few things that are really different with this, one of which is the maintenance. So your r and 20 you're going to have to make sure your oiler's filled up, constantly being monitored, making sure pneumatic tools staying lubricated is kind of what is expected with that. Okay. With the electric arms, it's more of a plug-and-play situation, so you don't have to worry about um, things pulling on your compressor, uh, maybe you have less capacity because of that. As long as you have a 110 volt outlet, you're good to go. Okay, let me see that thing. Yeah. Wow, this is nice. So yeah, that, that's about a 70 inches of reach right there. So 70 inches from the angle all the way to the end of the tapping. Um, 360 degree rotation, so you can spin it around if you needed to, take it to larger parts. Tyler, what is this? So that is a built-in semi-tap lubricating system. Um, so what that means is there's a reservoir arm right here that you can take this out, fill it up with lubricant, you can hook it up to air, and now you can mist your tap as you're going down. Just kind of save you some, some, save you some time from uh, dipping and tapping. Okay, awesome. Why don't you... Uh, you want to see it run? Me. Yeah. All right, so right here I've got a half 13 machined steel tap block. And then here we go. Wow, that is like effortless. Just like that. You notice it's very quiet, so you don't have the constant whining like a pneumatic Run unit. Off of 110, you said? 110, yep. Wow. So Tyler, real quick, I noticed that you tapped a through hole. Mm -hmm. What happens if you tap blind? Yeah, so a blind hole definitely happens a lot. I'm sure in a lot of other applications. So blind hole. So <laughs> what that is, it's a clutch. So there's a clutch that's mm. built into all of our tap holders that will um, tap clutch out once you hit the bottom of a blind hole or there's too much torque created. And you can adjust those with a spanner wrench there. You can loosen it or tighten it up depending on your material. But the thing is, you can go and you can keep doing that and you're not gonna break your tap. Wow. So traditionally in like a drill press or like by hand if you're going into a blind hole, once you hit the bottom, there's nowhere for that tap to go so it's gonna snap off inside your part. Obviously you gotta, fix it, rework it, or just scrap it. And obviously that's expensive in time, labor. So okay. just like that, down, you're not gonna break your tap. Nice. I can see why that'd be valuable. Oh, absolutely. So I know you have a smaller electric arm. Tell me a little bit about that one. Okay, yeah, love to. So like you mentioned, this is the REM16D. Um, the M stands for multi-positional head, so if you ever run into applications where you have to tap horizontally, um, that makes sense. So you can do that with this arm. So similarly to what you said, has a digital interface, runs off 110 outlet. Um, this only will give you about 50 inches of reach when it's articulated all the way out. 50 inches, I mean, it's still quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And this arm is really good for like going up to five eighths in machine steel, mm -hmm. but it can also go all the way down to like, if you do anything lower than quarter inch, it can go down to 80 as well. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasons why it's like really good for that is because you can actually control the RPM speed on here. So once you pull this out, you can go from literally 25 RPMs if you wanted to, all the way up to 500, which it's, it's pretty nice because I run into a lot of applications in which customers want to tap a little bit faster than a 400 RPM. So, so like your pneumatic ones, they're fixed. So it's going to be at fixed rate every time. With this, you can adjust the speeds. Yeah, absolutely. So it doesn't matter if you're going to like aluminum, if you're going to something harder like stainless. This will probably give you about 9 sixteenths, give or take, in uh, stainless steel. Okay. So if you're doing like aluminum or brass or some plastic composites, um, you're looking at about an inch, inch and a quarter capacity there. Wow, so still quite a bit. Oh, yeah. So um, another thing that's kind of cool is you mentioned about the, the holders that we have, but also our quick change accessories. So all of our electrics, oh man. Let me give you a hand. Yeah. So all of our electrics have a size two clutch in them. So with the help of our two to one reducer, we can run things like our Jacob's chuck. Mm -hmm. We can run things like an external die if you want to. So if you ever get into applications in which you're doing like rod stock or rebar, 
in which you have to put threads on the external side of a part, uh -huh. we can help you out with that. So for right now, um, we have fixtured up a customer uh, focus piece in which they were needing to learn how to kind of test at a better at a better rate. They were doing with a T-handle and that's not the best. Uh -huh. So they came in to see one of our electric solutions and I'll show you how easy it is to run with this one. Okay. So, so right now, um, we just kind of stuck in the Jacob's Chuck there, 3 eighths. Um, this is a 3 eighths by 16 hole. So I want to chamfer a hole and then I'll come across with the tapper and show you how easy that is. Okay. So all we're doing is breaking the edge here. So wow. that way, uh, that way the tap can set in perfectly and you'll have some nice pretty threads. So uh, you said you can do more than just tap with it. <clears> so if it's a laser cut hole, I'm assuming you can put a reamer in there to open things up and then chamfer it. But would it Absolutely. be able to, can it drill it out? Can it drill material? Yeah, so we get that all the time. Can you drill with the flex arm? Um, the answer is no, because there's no rack and pinion on this. Mm -hmm. The flex arm specializes in a low RPM, higher torque solution. Mm -hmm. So you're just not going to be satisfied with that. Um, and, and the person, all that downward force, because there's no rack and pinion, will have to come from the operator. So that's just kind of why we steer customers away from that. Okay. But I mean, we do have drilling solutions if you need it, right? Oh yeah. Okay. So, so this is a, you say three eighths, 16 laser cut hole? Yep. Okay. Three eighths, 16 laser cut hole at 500 RPMs. 500. Okay. So that's pretty quick. Yep. Wow. <laughs> that. So as you can kind of see, the customer was obviously happy with our solution. No, chance, no sweat for the flex arm. Um, yeah, very easy to use. Okay, so I know digital depth was something you mentioned a little bit on. Um, let's show you how that works. So both of these units have a digital depth control built into it. So if you want to do manual mode, just a forward and reverse, just like your, your other tapping arm. So forward, reverse, um, we have the digital depth mode. So really when this shines is like a production value. So if it's the same hole over and over again, like a 300 part run and you have to make sure you hit the bottom of that hole every time. Mm -hmm. So the way you change this would be going into this particular button and then you would select your folder and then you can program the different hole sizes and then tap sizes. So this we're gonna hit half and we're gonna save it. Then we're gonna go into the pitch, which would be 13. The depth I know for this particular block would be 0.7. And then you can control how fast it goes. So we'll go ahead and set this one at 250 RPMs. And you save, save again. And then you would just go ahead and select whichever mode you have selected here. Okay. So now you can see that it's set at a half tap. Here's your depth and here's the speed. And now it's tapping on its own. Wow. So let's say, I mean, somebody's got a, a bunch of parts in it, a pallet here, and you need to take them up, get them fixtured up onto here. And then you can have it going. And now it's tapping. I'm grabbing my next part. I'm getting it fixtured up over here while this thing's still going. So you can still be tapping while you're kind of changing over the next parts. Okay. So that's going to be the digital depth mode. Um, something else that you kind of mentioned that I want to touch on is the multi-positional head. Mm -hmm. So with these units, they have a multi-head and they have two bolts here that can be bro broken loose depending on the angle of your tapping. So a lot of the weldments that some of our customers have, uh, there, maybe there's different holes and different faces, things like that. So traditionally you'd have to refixture it, turn your part, make sure it's directly underneath your spindle. Um, but with this, you can break these bolts loose and now you can tap at an angle. Go ahead and adjust that for me. Oh, okay. So which one do I break loose first? So do that back one first. Oof. All right. So now you can see that you can go at that 90 degree angle. The way you get that positioned would be you take your alignment plug that comes with it and then you would put it on your part and then you would stick your chuck right inside the arm itself. And then you nice. would lock that back down and now you're going at that same angle every time. Wow. Okay. So it really helps fix for, uh, from refixturing things like that. And to go back to perpendicular, you put it back on your workpiece. 
Oh, and then this just goes right into the, oh, okay. And you just tighten it all back down. Nice. Looks pretty good. Perfect. So that way it maintains perpendicularity throughout your tapping operation. Every time, yep. Mm. So okay. one of my customers came in for a tap test and they had a bunch of laser cut parts and they were just kind of wondering what the best route would be, whether pneumatic or electric. And kind of at the end of the day with their laser cut parts in a variety of sizes, we kind of determined that the, the variable speed control with the production value of the digital depth was kind of the way to go. And that's ultimately what they ended up on going with. Okay, awesome. So Tyler, you mentioned perpendicularity and you mentioned that, uh, you know, kind of the name of the game is to not break taps and mm -hmm. make things easier for the operator. Sure. How does this cart, tell, tell me what this is. So this is our three foot mobile cart, it's on casters. Um, basically it's a blanchard ground top with fixture holes put into it so you can mount your same arm that you have your part fixtured to. So okay. with it being, being blanchard ground, you can make sure that everything's nice and flat. Because obviously, like you said, perpendicularity is the main thing. Um, don't recommend putting this on like a wooden workbench because obviously wood can be different uh, angles and pitches and all that kind of stuff. So Blanchard ground, um, again, with casters. So you can push it around your shop. You can have a mobile tapping station if you needed to. Um, mm. Definitely it comes in handy. Okay. Nice. Not to mention that the tap stand holder, keep everything nice and organized. Don't keep them rolling around and kind of in your way. Okay, awesome. Well, yeah, that's... Pretty much. I think that pretty much sums it up, Max. It's like, what else? What else could you do? This can go. What's the minimum capacity on this guy? So this one will comfortably go down to about a quarter of an inch. Um, the only reason we say it goes to a quarter is because obviously with smaller taps, um, there's a little bit less material there, so you just got to be careful going down and up. So as long as you can have a nice hand on it, you can go a little bit lower than that comfortably. Okay. Yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. Um, if you guys have any questions or if you guys uh, want to reach out for us, definitely feel free. Thanks for watching. And if you guys uh, need to know how you want to speed up your operations, feel free to give us a call. Visit us online. Um, we'll walk you through our process and kind of show you what we think uh, to save you time and money. So when you're ready to tap into profit, let us know. Visit us at flexmachinetools.com.